Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, the talk today is Affiliate Free Economics. I'm Oliver Roop, CEO of Viglink. If there's one word I want you to take away from today's talk, it's the word outclick. So every webmaster knows how many page views they have, they know how many uniques they have, but the fact that we can't tell whether Google is killing or saving the New York Times tells us that those metrics don't really tell the whole story. And so I want to introduce you to a new concept, uh, which you're all really familiar with, but it's certainly a new word, uh, that hopefully captures some of what's missing there, and that word is outclick. So every time a click leaves your site, value is being created. And you know this because you're often paid by the click or paid by the conversion, which nets back to clicks. But typically, we think of the monetized content of our site and, and the unmonetized content. And uh, affiliates are often ahead of the curve, understanding that really all content can be monetized. But uh, even affiliates can, can do well by thinking more in terms of outclicks. So let's think about a web page as surface area. Uh, you, you have pixels dedicated to ad units, uh, you know, to your logo, and to the content. The ad unit surface area has increased over time, and we're really now hitting a point of diminishing returns, where you just you can't squeeze much more advertising onto a page at the expense of content, or the users will stop coming. Also, Rubicon, uh, all the DSPs and their peers have done a great job of yield optimizing the revenue out of that, uh, those ad pixels. So really, you're at a, a point of diminishing returns in terms of uh, revenue you can get per surface area of ad unit. So if you want to go forward, you really have to start thinking about revenue from the content. And I'd say it's instructive to think about it as not dollars per page view, but dollars per pixel per page view. So is the surface area on your page being allocated to where it will maximally return you revenue? So just to step back a second and think about the market, uh, we have cost per click advertising, which, which is sort of dominated by AdWords, which typically returns about 8 to 11 percent of retail sales back to the uh, back to the advertiser in turn, or excuse me, to the publisher in terms of uh, payment. So on average, the, the retail market returns 8 to 11 percent of their sales to the publisher in return for the advertising. CPA advertising, on the other hand, uh, returns about 5% on average. Now, obviously, this varies, uh, but industry-wide, we see about a 5% average. So if you think about that, that's a little strange. Why does the price drop as risk decreases? So, so CPA advertising, you only pay uh, when a sale occurs. CPC, you pay whether or not a sale occurs. So in theory, you should think that uh, the price should improve with the reduction of risk, but instead it drops. And so we want to think a little bit about why. First, let's just jump into thinking about the market size of, you know, what is this all worth? If you see, find about $334 billion in e-commerce in uh, the United States, uh, of that about 20 percent, uh, and obviously this is a, a very fudgeable number that many people see up or down from here, but our, our averages see about 20 percent go out through affiliate sales. And typically only 5 percent of that is actually paid out in fees. And then when you break down, so, so basically within the United States about 3.3 billion is paid out by merchants to the aff entire affiliate ecosystem annually. But about half of that goes into direct deals with price grabbers of the world who just deal directly with the merchants. And the other uh, half is basically split about four to one between uh, the networks who take about a fifth and the, uh, the affiliates, which is generally the people in this room, that take the rest. And so really, you, you've cut it down to about 1.2 billion total dollars that are paid out to affiliates in the US. So if we could push that number from 5%, which we see today, to the 11%, which we see in SEM, what would that mean? Well, given all the same assumptions, you'd really see you know, about a doubling, or about $2.7 billion in affiliate payouts uh, you know, coming out to, to the affiliates. So why is it that the prices are lower for the lower risk medium? And our theory here are two answers, channel friction and supply constraints. So 
the, the channel friction means that for a merchant to work in affiliate, there's a lot of overhead that they have to work with that they don't have to work with in SEM. So key, um, key factors here are the effort of, of spam checking or cookie stuffing prevention and really trying to um, you know, uh, throw out the bad and fraudulent traffic from their networks, which is a challenge and takes work. Uh, there's illiquid offers, which means that uh, discovering the offer that will most appeal to your audience and getting the right offer to the right audience segment is more challenging than it should be and is still a very human and labor intensive process. And really, uh, the, the, the interfaces of the affiliate networks are the, for, for the most part pretty crude. There are definitely um, exceptions where you know, certain affiliate networks have done a good job of advancing the state of the art of, of the network and you know, making, making the interface much more easy to use. But uh, really, for the dominant players in the space, the interfaces haven't changed significantly in the last few years. Uh, the other one is supply constraints, which is really that not enough of the internet really participates in affiliate marketing. So if you think about what percentage of the internet uh, understands affiliate marketing, uh, you know, runs offers of any kind, uh, it's, it's really a tiny fraction. Uh, you know, we, we estimate it at sort of uh, parts per billion uh, and, and not substantial fraction. So if you could really solve those two problems, channel friction and supply constraints, the price, we believe the price would rise to match the SEM world, and really we'd, we'd sort of, uh, you know, we'd see a renaissance in the market. So, uh, you know, if you, if you think about buy side and sell side pressure, where the buyers are trying to reduce their risk, the buyers are the merchants, and the, the sellers, which are us, selling clicks, we would like uh, increased prices for our clicks. Really, the optimal state you're trying to achieve is, is a a CPA product that has the margins of uh, CPC or better. So if you start to think about content monetization as a practice the way SEO is a practice, content itself, every time you create content, now you think about SEO. You think, how am I going to get ranked? Uh, you know, how can I spread the keywords? Um, you know, every, every, content every content production practice you have internalizes SEO. What we're trying to push is the idea that content monetization itself is a practice as well. So how can we create content that really focuses around, uh, around the products and is easy to monetize and monetize as well? So uh, the answers get a little fuzzier here, and I think this is an emerging practice that, that we're all going to develop over time, and, and a lot of great wisdom has come out during this conference. But I'd say we just have a, a few basic rules that we'll sort of share up front uh, that you know, we've certainly observed in, in our practice. One is that uh, readers do not equal money. And I, I think affiliates know that quite well, but certainly mainstream publishers do not. Um, really, people tend to talk in terms of page views and uniques, uh, and, and really, they're actually very loosely correlated with affiliate revenue. So uh, we have brand name sites on our platform that have millions of users uh, that really do very poorly in terms of monetization. and sites one-tenth of the side that specialize uh, in, in um, you know, particular content and, and really focus around monetizable activity do much better. So definitely not thinking in page views and uniques, I'd say, is a, is a key. Um, focus matters. Obviously, this is a, you know, a, a trite statement. But I think we have seen uh, very positive results from small forums and blogs that have a, a particular focus. One I want to mention is uh, we have a forum that focuses on shaving, uh, that talks about nothing but shaving, that actually on a per unit uh, of traffic basis is, our, is one of our highest performers. So um, really, the, we see the broad spectrum content activities that are you know, uh, slice of life. Uh, are, are really poor performers, and the very focused uh, monetizable activity forums uh, tend, to, tend to do much better. So I'd say if you're looking to make monetized content, focus on a very particular niche and, and try to become the expert in the field. Um, trust matters. We, uh, we see that disclosure of um, monetizable links uh, 
showing your audience what you're doing and not trying to hide that you are an affiliate and that you're selling product makes a, a really big difference to monetization uh, in our network. So uh, we found that, that sites who uh, disclose appropriately generally perform twice as well or better than, than sites that do not disclose. So I think many affiliates are often reluctant to disclose uh, that they're running affiliate links uh, and that uh, you know, they're earning you know, sort of money off downstream purchase behavior. But our observation is that actually the reverse is true, that, that about uh, 2x, the, uh, 2x the, the sales volume results from, from sites on average that uh, disclose versus those that do not. And finally, I'd say, uh, you know, what gets measured gets managed. And uh, if you can have access to tools that can tell you, uh, you know, which particular links are performing the best, which particular subsites of your, of your forum or your, your blog are performing the best, which products are being sold, uh, you can really focus on selling more of the product that, uh, you know, that, that your readers are already buying. And often, often our customers have seen surprising results. So as a result of looking at the data, they've understood, you know, it's time to shift from, uh, you know, what, what they believed their users were into and what they were not. And, and certain collaborative tools are emerging where uh, you can compare yourselves to your peers on an anonymous basis and say, you know, what products am I selling uh, and what products are my peers selling that I'm not but should be based on, based on their data. And so the techniques of social networks and the, the Facebooks of the world uh, you know, are really applicable to, uh, you know, to affiliate marketing. So uh, I guess I ran through that a little faster than uh, potentially expected. Um, but if there's any questions, uh, I'd, I'd love to take some questions. You can step up to the mic, or if you just uh, shout your question out, I'll, I'll repeat it back. Absolutely. The question is, uh, can you give some uh, specific examples of how people disclose and um, of people who are disclosing and how they disclose that? Um, so the, the how is much easier. Uh, um, so uh, Big Link and our competitors all have little badges that can be introduced at the bottom of the page that uh, basically disclose to to your audience what you're doing, that, that the uh, content on your site is automatically affiliated. Um, that has a number of benefits. One is that the FTC obligations uh, for disclosure are, are arguably taken care of. I think there's definitely some case law there that remains to be settled. Um, and I think the, the who, um, you know, we, we have, I'd say, hundreds of blogs that, that have attached that badge. We make it very easy to do that. Uh, there certainly are um, Certain customers of ours take a, a more reluctant approach, so often they disclose it in, you know, buried in the terms of service, and it's, it's not very well uh, read. Uh, we've definitely had a number of cases where customers, uh, you know, their users discover what they're doing and, and anger results. And, and generally, the, the, um, the attitude of the users has been, uh, you know, this is fine, what you're doing, but you really need to tell us. And I think, um, you know, we, we certainly don't force our customers to do anything, and we couldn't police it if we did, but I think uh, we strongly urge our customers to disclose the use of a technology like our own or someone else's, uh, because it really, it not only gets better results, but it prevents user backlash. Um, what, sorry, what? Absolutely. So uh, that's a great question. The question is, 
um, if I'm paraphrasing slightly, the, uh, the, the direct response television market has, has encountered difficulty getting major brands to engage in some of the DRTV techniques, uh, even though they completely control the creative. And so how do you get major brands to get over the same hump as far as you know, direct response advertising when they may just be reluctant to do it? And I, I think that's a great observation. I mean, I, I think no one in this room will be surprised by this. You know, affiliate marketing has a little bit of a sleazy reputation. And, and I think some, <laughs> indeed, <laughs> I think some of the, um, some of the merchants, uh, you know, are reluctant on that front. Although I think if you take a survey of, you know, the major internet retailers in, on the market and who has an affiliate program, the answer is almost all of them. I mean, really, it's the exception rather than the rule. So I think the, the more precise question is how do I convince a merchant to engage with me? Uh, and, and, and I think, you know, that is the challenging question. I would say really, you know, some of the things we mentioned, uh, which are um, direct user engagement with a small audience, it needn't be big, but, but a, a, an engaged smaller audience is much more valuable than a, than a less engaged larger audience. Uh, trust of your users, uh, you know, direct disclosure that you are in fact, you know, advocating these products. Uh, and then another tried answer, but, but real quality content that, uh, you know, that, that appeals to, to the merchant. And I think when we looked at how affiliates spend their time, really an extraordinary percentage was going towards bookkeeping and dealing with URLs and sort of, you know, the direct physical integration of URLs into content, and not enough time was going into the part that really adds value, which is creating content. And so tools like our own and, and our competitors offer, uh, you know, the ability to really get rid of the, the annoying work that, that a computer can do that involves, you know, Excel spreadsheets and, and copying and pasting, and really let the humans focus on what only humans can do, which is, you know, create fabulous content that draws engaged readers. Anyone else? One more? Okay, I think we're all set. Thank you very much, uh, and I'm available afterwards if you'd like to chat.